Good morning, Internet, and welcome to a, um, not entirely sure this is a tech tip video or just a here's a crazy machine I made video. But in one of my playthroughs, I was, I tried to make one of these in survival, and it kind of worked, and then it, it really kind of didn't. It kind of, uh, pause that, it kind of stemmed from a comment on a video of why can't you combine sour gas, liquid oxygen, and liquid hydrogen. And the idea I had is, what if you froze everything and then sorted it out and then turned it back into a liquid? So freezing methane, easy, turning it back into a gas, you run it on some rails. Freezing oxygen, eh, harder but not super hard. Dump it up in here, go over the shipping rails. So each one of these just picks up whatever it's supposed to. This just picks up the frozen chunks and runs it around the tepidizer until it liquefies. Same thing with the hydrogen side. Methane just gets dumped and then goes around the rails until it evaporates. So that's the shipping. I want everyone to take a deep breath. We're now going to look at the plumbing. <laughs> so there are four aqua tuners in here. These three are trying to cool this super coolant pool. So each aqua tuner has its own loop. They're all set to negative 260, which mostly keeps them from saying the liquid's too cool. In order to keep these thermium aqua tuners from overheating, this pump of oil dumps in oil if the temperature gets too high. This would be the sour gas part of the boiler. Once the pressure in here gets above 10 kilograms, these pumps kick on. I should have warned you about the gas piping. It then goes through the steam room in order to take the 500 degree sour gas and get it down into the 100 something degree, just so the cooling doesn't have to work so hard. I mean, you get some power out of it, but we're not really focusing on the power. This aqua tuner is not just cooling these steam turbines, it's also pre-chilling the oxygen and the hydrogen. So the oxygen and the hydrogen are coming in quite hot and they're coming out at negative 90. Again, so this room doesn't have to work so hard. After a couple of trial and errors, what I figured out is all the gases have to come in over here. The coldest supercoolant has to be on this side. So sour gas will freeze to methane immediately. Oxygen mostly freezes, but as you can see, sometimes it makes it over to here. Hydrogen will liquefy on this top layer and then freeze over on this side where it's coldest. When you first start this up, the supercoolant has to have a low enough amount so this tile can get replaced by the other liquid. It needs to be able to force it out so the pump doesn't pick it up. But it is running two kilograms of sour gas, two kilograms of oxygen, and a kilogram of hydrogen. Any gas that, any hydrogen or oxygen that flashes back to a gas gets pumped down into the room to get refrozen. Here, we'll speed it up a little bit. I don't think I've got this balance. I don't think I've gotten all the math totally sorted out. But it does technically work. You know, this, I think I might need more pumps. The amount of cooling that these are taking, even with 70 degree oil, means that the pressure in here, I think, is going up. And obviously this is gonna hurt your frame rate. This many phase transitions, various things turning into liquids, gases, solids, it's, you know, this is a debug map where all I'm doing is testing and it, it doesn't particularly like it. Obviously I've got debug power generation because this isn't about making power, this is about seeing whether these three aqua tuners 
can both generate enough heat for the sour gas as well as enough chill to cool down all the requirements. And it does seem to work. Definitely needed three steam turbines in here. I started with just two and the sour gas wasn't getting below 200 degrees. So the third steam turbine was necessary. I'm also cooling them with just granite pipes on this super coolant, which keeps them super cold. This liquid pump is just recycling. I don't particularly care. Yeah, you know, I mostly just want to see like, can I only pump up what I want without having to use a filter? So by having the pumps up high enough, it means I'm not sucking up any of the super coolant. The tepidizers are set to just above freezing. So if all this liquid from this ice coming in gets too cold, the tepidizer then reliquifies it. Obviously for the methane, it's set to the evaporation point. But yeah, it, it works. How's this hydrogen doing? Now the whole point of putting it on rails is so it can go past these tip shift plates and slowly exchange heat with the other hydrogen and the super coolant. So even though this is all 254, that solid hydrogen doesn't exchange heat fast. And then everything is thermium. We got thermium blocks, thermium temp shift plates, just anything to get things to exchange heat properly. First starting this up, there was, it got up to several hundred kilograms of gas as this was cooling down. I mean, build this if you want to go through the technical exercise of seeing if you can, but in any sort of survival map, just stick to regular pipes. Regular pipes cooled to the right temperature work great for making liquid oxygen, hydrogen, running a sour gas. Obviously testing a couple of other sour gas designs over here, trying to make a more compact one and so far it's working. Using all thermium, I've got two kilograms going in in a two tile wide system. And so far the cooling seems to be holding up. One aqua tuner is doing it, which it should. I was mostly worried about whether or not I could just exchange enough heat with this few tiles. So I might switch those over to thermium instead of diamond and see if they work better. The reason being is thermium has, where is it? Heat capacity of 0.6 and conductivity of 200. Diamond, heat capacity of 0.5 and conductivity of 80. So if you got thermium, build all your radiant stuff out of thermium. It's just, it's the best stuff but that's also why it's a space resource. I'm waiting to see, I mean, this hydrogen should eventually melt. I don't want to turn the tepidizer up because already that liquid's at just below, no, I want hydrogen. Yeah, the evaporation point is 250. So right now I'm at 254. That's what I'm guessing this ice is coming in at. Now the ice is coming in at negative 260. Anyway, I'm going to put this in high speed mode for a little bit. I wonder if I just need to make that rail longer. Because it's just not exchanging. All right. Pardon me while we do... And I'll grab the wonderful pliers. There. Oh, yeah, see that? <laughs> that made it evaporate. Interesting. I mean, you'd think it would, it would gain heat faster than that. 
I say it in negative two, five, three, pump some heat into it for a little bit. All right, now set it back. Like I said, it, it works, but it's more of a technical exercise than anything you should build. The oxygen side works, the methane side works, getting hydrogen to freeze and then remelt without exploding is, it was a challenge. How's this doing? Yeah, I think now that everything's down to maximum low temperature, these won't produce as much heat because the liquid's too cold, so the pressure in here is stabilized. Interesting. Anyway, this is my tech tip video on a combination system that is way too complicated and not worth it, but absolutely awesome to try. Thanks for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful day. If you have other crazy and stupid things to build or other ideas or other maps and you know, post pictures, let people see what you've tried because this game is fun, but it's much more fun when you get to share. Anyway, thank you for watching again and have a good day.